Uh, we're in the middle of something that's quite unusual for um, a pandemic. Um, and, you know, normally this time of the year, I'm sitting in Stockholm, or well, actually I was just, would have just been leaving Tokyo for Paris for the European champs. Um, so it's a little strange. How have you been dealing with your athletes during the pandemic? Um, did you have meetings with them or how were you guys doing that? Yeah, it's been, it's been so interesting. I feel like we've had so many different phases of like our time period and our interaction. Um, when the pandemic first hit and we all came home and the athletes went home and Georgetown exited, um, it was really about supporting them through that time period. It was an extremely stressful time period to be a student athlete. Um, you didn't know in the beginning, it was like, okay, you could be going home for a few weeks or maybe it's a month. Maybe you're coming back. Maybe you're not coming back. Um, so initially I kept their mileage pretty low, the intensity of their work pretty low because they were stressed out and they were trying to settle in and, um, identify what this new you know, everybody says the new normal, but like what was their individual new normal? Um, and some of our student athletes, big picture in our program, like weren't necessarily in an environment that was conducive to learning. So it was trying to help them set up um, what that would look like for themselves and their family or extended family, depending on their living situation. But that first time period was really all about getting them through the end of the semester, like successfully completing their classes. Yeah. Um, if they had been training at a high level, maybe we stepped it back a little bit. The worst, to me, my biggest fear in, in that moment as their coach and for their physical well being um, was that we didn't have an injury on top of what was happening around them. Um, sure. It was, at a minimum, people were still allowed to go out the door and go for a run. Mm -hmm. But if they were going to incur an injury, you know, based on the amount of stress that they were managing, plus we were trying to train them at a high level through that time period, I thought, oh my gosh, there may not be a bike to get on. There may not be a gym to get into. And there really wasn't. Um, so we kind of stepped it back a little bit and just let them kind of get through that semester. Um, and then I really approached it on an individual basis with them. I met after the semester ended, I had a bunch of individual meetings with the, with the women that I directly coach. And um, really assessed where they were emotionally and physically. Like, did they want to have a mini buildup? Um, did they want to get back? Did they have access to a track? Did they have access to resources that would be conducive to trying to have like a, um, a buildup? So we, we probably had about 30% um, of our team at that time want to get after it. And so we were coaching that group. And then, and then some of them just wanted to run. They just were like, workouts are kind of stressing me out right now. Like I've been kicked out of my track so many times, like I just want to do mileage. So we really just focused on the individual experience. And what I found was, um, it was really hard for them. Not that it was not that that should be a surprise, but mm. you would see many of them, like their, their will was different than their ability to execute. Yeah. Um, like, yes, I want to get in shape. I want to go work out really hard, but yeah, I mean, they're doing it by themselves. Like training partners were scarce if, if they were available at all. Um, half of their worry would be about whether they were going to get kicked off a track that day or not. Um, and we, we were very, very clear with them. Like if you are not allowed to be at that facility, you cannot be there. Um, we do not want anybody like breaking the law or trespassing depending on what the experience was or, or where they were living in the country or even outside of the country. Yeah. Um, so there was a lot that we were trying to manage with them. And if it was safe and it was um, something that was acceptable, uh, you know, and that they wanted to do, um, you know, we would, we would support them in doing that. Um, but we really were adamant about like being respectful, being safe, of course, um, and also making sure that any, any facility that they were using was used by the public, um, that, that they were in a, in a position that they weren't, um, doing anything wrong. <laughs> That's the last thing that we wanted at that moment. Um, but then we just transitioned from that point to, Hey, let's get ready for cross country. And so just like we would have for any other summer buildup, you know, but middle of June, we transitioned everybody after a, a break, a week or two break. And we moved them right over into the buildup for cross country. Um, so that's where they were as of even two, two, three weeks ago, 
was, was doing that. So, um, you know, and then it was just a, you know, a matter of kind of, again, kind of finding out where they were, um, you know, as they planned for the fall. And so we really just talked about, Hey, let's get some time trials in or, um, thinking big picture. Like if we're going to try to be an all American cream cross country next fall, you know, like let's, let's give them the time period to grieve over the loss this season, but then let's get serious about like, it's an opportunity. You're going to get to train like a professional athlete right now, getting ready for your outdoor track season. So oh. if we're trying to take a step forward with our running, we can't hope that that happens when, um, when the pan, when, when coronavirus is, is not around anymore, you know, we've got to be thinking about what is it that we need to do right now to take a huge step forward in our running without racing. Um, so whether that's time trialing, whether that's, um, you know, uh, just building their base, like raising their mileage, you know, the types of long runs that they're doing, the intensity of work that they're doing. So, um, the last couple of weeks has been an assessment with, with them individually. Okay. Like where, where are we going right now? Like if we want to be here by the spring, if we want to be making the NCAA final by the spring, let's work backwards. Um, so huge long answer for you, but it's just really been segment by segment, phase by phase. And, um, you know, right now, right before, you know, that this change, we said, Hey, let's not assume we have indoor track. It's going to be the most difficult season to execute at this point. So let's be thinking about how we can be ready to sharpen our tools in March and get ready for that outdoor season. So working backwards from that point in time, I don't want them to have another round of disappointment. So I'm like, let's just, it's not going to happen. Let's go with indoors not happening. And if it happens, then like, that's an, an amazing bonus for us. Um, but I don't think there's any right answer. You know, I talked to other coaches and everyone was just, you know, trying to do their best and trying to help them stay motivated as much as possible. 